Hi, my name is Amy Knowlton, and I'm here with Marilyn Marks and Heather Pettis. And we are going to share with you some of our research that explores the effects of human activities on right whales. North Atlantic right whales have been nicknamed the urban whale because of their overlap with various forms of human activity. Unfortunately, many of these activities pose significant threats to the species, especially entanglement in fishing gear and vessel strikes. As curators of the photo ID catalog, we are responsible for monitoring how many right whales there are. But the photo ID catalog can be and is used for other studies as well. Over the history of our program, we have developed several methods that also utilize the photo ID photographs to provide insights on how right whales are impacted by human activities. In this video, we will share with you how we track right whale entanglements, vessel strikes, and health over time. Hi, I'm Marilyn Marks. As Amy mentioned, we know that entanglements in fishing gear and vessel strikes are two of the most significant threats facing right whales. In order to assess the impact these activities are having and to inform management measures, we need to understand how many whales are affected and what type of injuries are incurred. To evaluate this, we analyze the scars from these events to begin the process. Using the scar coding console of the digits platform that you heard about in the Right Whale Program's catalog video, I review every photo of every right whale sighted during a particular year and I code for any new anthropogenic, that is human caused scars that they acquired. And those are from vessel strikes or entanglement. Wounds from vessels are often from the propeller and wrapping scars are an indicator of entanglement. I enter what kind of scar, where it is located on the body and whether the scar is new or old. If it's a new scar, I look back to see when it was seen without the scar to determine the scar acquisition timeframe. For both vessel strikes and entanglements, we also categorize each new scar for severity. But for entanglement scars, we do further calculations to determine the percentage of right whales with new entanglement scarring per year and also over a whale's lifetime. When we first started the scar analysis in 1996, 71% of the population had entanglement scars. But now, after the most recent year of scar coding, sightings through 2018, it's up to 87%. More than half the whales with entanglement injuries have been entangled more than once, and some as many as eight times. We have also determined that entanglement injuries are much more severe in recent decades than they were in the 1980s and 90s. Through our work of evaluating scars, we have documented over 1,600 entanglement in events involving right whales over the past 39 years. So analyzing scarring is not the only way for us to determine how right whales are faring. Heather will explain another powerful tool we use. Hi, I'm Heather Pettis, and much of my research is focused on assessing and monitoring the visual health of North Atlantic right whales. Evaluating the health of any animal can be quite difficult, but trying to do so for a large free-ranging whale presents even more challenges. In the early 2000s, we took advantage of some external cues that are visible in whales that we know to be in compromised health, including whales with chronic entanglements, and developed the visual health assessment method. This method is non-invasive. It relies on photographs that are routinely taken for photo identification purposes, and uses changes in external features as proxies for what is happening physiologically inside of the whale. The way the method works is relatively simple. While examining photographs of an individual whale, we look closely at four parameters. The first is skin condition, which evaluates the coloration of a whale's skin, which should be nice and black. The second is body condition, this evaluates the general shape of the back, which should include a rounded body and flat back. The third is whether we see marks forward of the blowholes, and these are called rake marks. And then the fourth is whether or not there is an accumulation of cyamids or whale lice in the blowholes. We score each of these parameters to be in good or poor condition, and then we enter this information into a health assessment database. 
We look at every photograph of every whale taken each year and then assess how health changes over time for individuals and for the entire species. As an example of how changes in health can be visualized, here we have two photographs of the same whale taken in different years. In the image on the left, the whale is in good visual health. The skin is black, the back is flat, and there is no evidence of rake marks or cyamids in the blowholes. The image on the right tells a very different health story. In this image, this whale shows multiple signs of poor health, including white areas of the skin called lesions, a depression in the back, which indicates that the whale is thin, and rake marks and cyamids in and around the blowholes. Using the visual health assessment method, we have examined and scored health for all individual North Atlantic right whales. The visual health assessment database is linked to the photo ID catalog and the SCAR database so that we can look at how visual health changes with life history events, such as reproduction, as well as injuries and interactions with human activities. Some of the trends that we've seen included decline in right whale health over the last 30 years. Moreover, we have seen a general decrease in body condition with a significant drop from 2010 on, which coincides with the species distribution shift. This suggests that right whales are not storing energy reserves like they should be. This could be because their food is not as high quality as it used to be, and or they are exerting more energy searching for shifting feeding areas. Lastly, the visual health assessment method has shown us that entanglements in fishing gear and vessel strikes can greatly reduce a right whale's overall health over time. The visual health assessment method has made valuable contributions to our understanding of how whales respond physiologically to changing life history events, interactions with human activities, and changing ocean conditions. As you can see from the work that we've been doing to assess human impacts and their effects on right whale health, we have learned a tremendous amount about the challenges that right whales are facing. Through our efforts, we've been able to provide input on management practice that might be best, best reduce risk to right whales from human activities. For example, slowing vessel speeds, rerouting vessel traffic, reducing rope strengths, and implementing ropeless technologies are tools that our team has helped to shape as a result of our efforts describing what right whales have endured. The scarring and visual health assessments that we conduct annually will also help in evaluating the effectiveness of management actions that the US and Canadian governments need to implement with a goal of saving this species from extinction. Thanks for watching our video.